So Lutka, welcome. And you know, uh, since the EB2 and EB3 priority dates are hard to predict, should one apply for an EB2 and EB3? That's a good question. And you know, it's uh, it's a really tough one. Because if we are talking about EB2 and EB3, so um, obviously we are talking about probably PERM application or labor certification. So while, you know, it would be great to decide which one to do and applicants would like to do an EB2, in reality, it's really up to the employer. Uh -huh. So you, you may have a situation that the person has a master's degree, which would qualify them for EB2, and they would like to proceed with EB2. Mm -hmm. um, however, you know, it's up to the requirements of the position. So it's in hands of the employer. If the position requires, for example, bachelor's degree plus two years of experience, it's going to be EB3, even though um, our client or applicant does have a PhD, for example, and normally they would qualify for EB2 just having that advanced degree. But unfortunately, oftentimes, you know, in, in PERM or labor certification, you know, this is the process that is driven by the employer and employer really cannot tailor the requirements of the position for that particular um, an employee. So. If the employer is going with EB2, obviously it's better. Why is it better? Because just in case in the future the EB3 is doing better, there is an option to downgrade and go to EB3. Uh -huh. But the other way around, it's not really possible. So if the individual already has secured EB3, it's not easy to upgrade. Actually, it's not possible. There would have to be a new application filed you know, as EB2. Mm -hmm. So, you know, yeah. we, I know clients would love to go with the EB2, but at the end of the day, it's really um, about the employer, you know, how they decide, what are the requirements for the position and so on. But of course, the applicant can file on their own, you know, whether it's EB2 as a national interest waiver or even EB1 if they qualify, of course. Mm -hmm. So a lot of nuances there, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah it's, to consider. Uh, it, it, it's a confusion because, you know, a lot of applicants think just because they have advanced degree, they automatically qualify. And I have to say that this question comes at least once a day. And they are very concerned because if you think about it, the wait time right now, the priority yeah. that they are processing is 2012 for oh, wow. both categories. Uh -huh. So there is not a huge difference. But for example, I remember three years ago in 2020, uh, EB3 was doing better. So we were filing all downgrades for everyone. Uh -huh. So typically people like to have both EB2 and EB3 and see which one goes faster. Still, it's a really long time. Uh -huh. So the best definitely would be to apply for EB1 if eligible, of mm -hmm. course. But that's a topic for a different discussion, how to yes. upgrade it to EB1. Well, thank you for shining the light on it today and uh, thank you, Lutka. That's Lutka Zimovchek of the NPZ Law Group, providing counsel to companies and individuals worldwide on complex U.S. and Canadian immigration issues. Call them today and mention Mirchi for that special discount at 201-670-0006 or log on to V.